Okay, first of all, let me thank the organizing for inviting me to this uh, interesting um, workshop. Really, I'm a bit uh, out of the main uh, topic of the focus, but uh, I hope that uh, uh, my presentation that is more focused on the meteorological aspects will be of interest, uh, even if uh, it's not uh, um, uh, the focus of, of some of you. Also, I would like to say that I'm slightly changing the, the title because uh, I would like to clarify from the beginning that uh, the simulation I will show are not related to tornadoes. So I'm not going to a one or 10 meters as uh, Professor Orff did, but uh, I will focus on supercell. And so uh, the grid spacing will be about to one kilometer. Okay. Uh, this is the outline. In order to, um, I decided to organize my presentation, providing an overview of the um, research I did on the topic uh, in the last five or six years. And I follow really a chronological order. So I, I will start for, with a case study, a very intense event that affected the southeastern Italy. Then I will move to describe uh, a climatology, an updated climatology of tornadoes in Italy. And uh, finally, I will describe uh, uh, the synoptic and mesoscale environment where they typically form and develop in different regions, which is of interest not only of Italy, but also make a difference between uh, more continental and the peninsular Mediterranean countries. Well, first of all, I will show you this uh, track this is the, the case study we analyzed, I analyzed for some years. And uh, it really was a very intense event, as I will show you soon. It characterized by a supercell moving from the Ionian Sea to the Adriatic Sea and producing an intense tornado uh, about uh, 10 or 15 kilometers long, but producing also, after it was lifted on the Ionian coast, it produced new damages on the Adriatic side. So it was in uh, late November, so a bit late in the season of, of tornadoes. And I want to show you this uh, very peculiar, I have to say, a picture, because there was uh, a boy uh, very close to the track of the tornado. And so due to also to the fact that uh, the, um, uh, the sea near the city of, Tarant of Taranto has this uh, and semi enclosed the basin, it produces this sort of sea level oscillation of about 30 centimeters and then progressively smaller, associated with the passage of the tornado just near uh, the buoy. This is, there are some images on the right which shows the intensity of the, the event with the sun crane that fell down, a concrete chimney that was completely destroyed. So the damage were really relevant of about 60 million euros were estimated. And also there was unfortunately one casualty. Uh, estimated intensity was about 220 kilometers per hour. And uh, the peculiarity of this event also compared to other Italian events is the multivortex structure, the huge dimensions, the diameter was about 300 meters after landfall and increased to 500 meters in, uh, in land with a, a significant, very intense translational speed of about 21, 22 meters per second. And also the supercell lasted for almost one hour. The first part uh, of, the, uh, of the, the, the analysis was related to understand what was the mechanism responsible for this event. So, the first uh, aid came from the radar reflectivity. In particular, here they shown the vertical maximum intensity, which shows this line of intense cells. So the red are and the, and the purple are the most intense. You see here this photogram, which shows just this intense cell reaching the coast of Apulia region. This is really the supercell that produced the, the tornado. So it seems clearly from this picture that there was some convection originated in the, co in the orography of Calabria region that was advected downstream and then fa found a favorable environment for intensification and produced uh, the supercell that, that spawned the, the tornado. 
So the next step was to try to identify, to understand also via uh, through numerical simulation, uh, the mechanisms generation of this event. So we, we did some uh, simulation using the WRF model, which is a state of the art limited area model. And uh, here I show you some uh, image showing the vertical component of relative vorticity at 2000 meter. Uh, with each um, frame is uh, every five minutes. And you see that this lucky uh, simulation showed this peak, this red uh, uh, spot that crossed the really the right place with just a 30 minutes delay. So for a meteorological simulation was very good result. And the, the possibility to reproduce correctly the simulation allowed to move to understand through sensitivity experiment where what were the mechanism responsible for this event. And really at the end, we learned uh, from this simulation that uh, the, the tornado was subject, the supercell was subject to different phases. First, there was the triggering of convection from over the orography of uh, Calabria region. And then the cells were advected northeastward by the strong uh, wind. Here, the cells found uh, an environment favorable to intensification because there were some convective roles who brought uh, heat and moisture to the cells. And finally, the environment also slightly changed with time in the sense that there was an increase in the instability, in the convective available potential energy, and in the low level shear, which make condition even more favorable to supercellular convection. So uh, the conditions were extremely favorable and there was a combination of different events which make them possible. The next step was to identify if the sea surface temperature had any role in the, in the intensification of the supercell. So we make some sensitivity experiments where we slightly changed the sea surface temperature in our simulation domain by plus or minus one or 0 0.5 Kelvin. And we were really surprised to see this result, which shows the vertical velocity of 600 um, hectopascal, particularly the maximum value, you see that there is a very strong dependence with the value of the surface temperature. You see that the intensity compared to the control run where the surface temperature is uh, realistic, increasing by one Kelvin intensified a lot the intensity of the vertical motion inside the supercell. While on the opposite side, when the temperature was decreased by one Kelvin, the vertical intensity was much smaller and really no supercell developed at all, showing, suggesting that sea surface temperature has an important role, at least in this event. After this uh, study, uh, the next step was uh, thinking about uh, what is the situation in Italy? So uh, how rare, how unusual are this kind of event? So the next step was to think about uh, acclimatology. And really, uh, this work by Peter Gronmeyer and uh, Kuhne showed that uh, tornadoes in Italy are not uh, uh, really unusual since uh, five of the deadliest, uh, the 10 deadliest tornadoes in, in Europe occurred in Italy. So events like uh, so intense are not so unusual. And so we think that it could be important to update the climatology that was a bit old. So uh, we analyzed the annual distribution of tornadoes in a 10 years period, finding that, that uh, the average number of events is about 37. But uh, what is relevant to see that uh, you see the orange column represents the tornadoes that originated as water spout. So about uh, half of the tornadoes in, uh, in the Italian regions are originated by by as, as a water spout. So they develop over the sea and then they move inland. And also we found that the density of events was comparable with the other Mediterranean region. So confirming that most of the events were kept inside the data set. It was also interesting to see the rating distribution clearly compared, for example, to US or also to uh, Northern European countries, the number of intense events is uh, relatively small, 
But on the other side, intense events are not negligible. You see that 24 cases in 10 years were stronger or of in category two or stronger in the Nansen Fujita scale. It is also interesting to see the monthly and the diurnal distribution. About the monthly distribution that is shown with the, the blue columns, you see that there is a clear peak occurring in late summer or early fall. But if you look at the contribution of tornadoes originated at the water spout that or are the orange column, you see that the peak is, of course, much later. The peak is really in October. And when you look instead in the inland tornadoes, you see that the peak occur much earlier in late spring or uh, in uh, also it's very intense also in the in summer. It's also nice to see how the distribution occur during the, the, the day. As uh, we saw in the previous uh, um, presentation, uh, events, severe convective events are not uh, are rare, but may occur during the night. But most of the most intense events of the tornadoes affecting Italy occur in the early afternoon. In particular, you see the red and the um, purple color represents the most intense events that occur mainly in the, in the early afternoon. Uh, also interesting to see how the distribution occur in the different regions, which is an indication on, uh, of how uh, more peninsular Mediterranean Asia areas differ from more continental uh, climate. And you see that there is a clear gradient. Events occur mainly in September and October in the southern region, while they occur mainly during uh, uh, late spring or uh, beginning of, of summer in the northern. And finally, it's also irrelevant to see how these events are distributed. Again, the color represents the intensity of the case. And clearly, you can see that there are some areas where they occur more frequently. So there is a cluster in uh, Po Valley, in particular in the eastern side, in uh, southern Apulia region, in Sicily, in the Mediterranean coast, and also in Liguria. Really, Liguria is the region with the highest density of tornadoes, although most of them are weak water spout, and so they don't produce really significant uh, uh, damage in, in the region. So the, the next step, since we have now this uh, idea of where tornadoes are located, is to, was to analyze what are the conditions that uh, are responsible for the development of these events in the different region. So we make uh, extend our data set to about uh, 20 years, we consider also the most intense events, so what category one or more, and where the occurrence were, was known with a, um, quite a good uh, precision. And also we consider the uh, hourly era five reanalysis for identifying the statistic of these events. And we move to considering a clustering, first uh, uh, considering the density of the events and then making a more um, subject objective criteria, considering a criteria of dynamical sim similarity, and we identified five different clusters at the end. North, Northwest, Central, Sicily, Southwest, and uh, Ionian regions. And for all these cases, we moved to analyze what were the typical conditions responsible for these events. So in the upper panels, you see the mean of the geopotential at 500 hectopascal, which was one of the most characteristic uh, field, the sense that it was the most anomalous with respect to the climatology. This is represented for the different clusters. So southwestern, southeastern, central, you see the position, the, the, um, the average location of the tornado currents is shown by a star. You see that in all cases, tornadoes occur on the east side of a trough, an upper level trough. But what is really relevant is to see the anomaly. So how far is the, the, the condition, are the condition conducive to tornadoes with respect to the average? And you can see that there are some differences in the sense that, for example, the Ionian tornadoes occur in areas with relatively weak anomaly. You see that the greatest anomaly is on the Western Mediterranean. So showing that there is 
difference between the different clusters. But the differences are even stronger when we look at other fields. For example, when you look at the, the temperature at 900 hectopascal, while the values, the absolute values in, uh, in the area where tornadoes occur is similar, when you look at the anomaly, it is completely different. We have a strong positive anomaly in the southern cases, which occur typically in autumn, where you have a negative anomaly in these uh, cases occurring in the north, which are typical occur in the summer, so are associated to the incoming of colder air for the north. And also for um, um, specific humidity, you see that the area where tornadoes occur are, is always very high, but with a significant difference in terms of anomaly. In the southern region, the values of anomaly is very high because this is a vected humidity that occurs associated with some synoptic system, while in the northern region, the anomaly is very small because they occur mainly in summertime when the value of specific humidity is very high during all the season. And that similar results occur also for the instability. So moving to the last, the very last uh, three slides, I want to focus on uh, another aspect which shows significant difference between peninsular and continental cases. This is a, the storm relative helicity between 1,000 and 900 hectopascal. Similar results occur for the low level in shear. And you see that the southern cases are again associated with very intense values of this parameter. So there is a strong shear, strong uh, both directional and uh, speed shear with uh, in the low levels. And you see also the anomaly for these cases is very high, while it's much smaller for the northern and central cases. The last uh, image I want to show is about uh, the sea surface temperature anomalies. So is the sea surface temperature relevant for the occurrence of uh, Italian tornadoes? The answer is depends on the region. In the upper panel it is shown the anomaly for northeastern tornadoes. You see that the values are not particularly high. They are even smaller for Tyrrhenian cases. On the left is shown cases that are F1 or stronger, in the right F2 or stronger, while the Ionian tornadoes, as we saw in the case study I showed at the beginning, are affected by very intense values of the anomaly. So these are the conclusion that um, I don't want, I think I ran out of time. So they, they summarize more or less what I showed, I discussed it before. And I, I, you can see here that central literary is with a, a question mark because the, what emerged in these studies is that it's not yet clear what are the mechanisms associated with the, these regions, while the distinction between southern and northern Italian tornadoes is more clear. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your presentation, uh, Dr. Miglietta. Are there questions? Yes. Hi, Professor Miglietta. Uh, I'm Dario Rangir from the University of Genoa. I'm a PhD student. Uh, first of all, congratulations for the very nice presentation. Thank you. I have two questions. The first one is that, uh, uh, can we say that the land spots are their most similar events to, for example, the tornadoes in other parts of the world, like uh, in the USA, while uh, uh, the water spout are, in a set of way, uh, Mediterranean Sea self-events due to the mechanism involved. For example, based on the monthly average distribution, because uh, the land spots uh, 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 have uh, a higher frequency in the spring, like in the USA, while the water spouts uh, uh, have a larger uh, frequency in the autumn. And the second question is just uh, a curiosity. Uh, if you can spend some words uh, about the trends in the number uh, and the frequency of these events uh, seen, since, uh, 
I don't know, it, it seems like uh, uh, these events are also very frequent during the winter time uh, when uh, they should be unusual for the period. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your question. Um, both are very interesting. About the first, really, um, the characteristic or the season of uh, seasonality of these events uh, in different parts of the world and, and uh, different parts of Europe is st strongly related to, to the condition that favor. No? So, for example, in the so called uh, tornado LA, you have this contrast between the, you know, the transport of very warm and moist air from the Gulf of, of, of Mexico with cold air coming from the north. So, every region has its uh, peculiar characteristic. In general, the more you move to the north, also if you look at the distribution in, uh, in uh, Europe, the more um, the, the season change to, to, to summer is more uh, focused on summer while or early or, or spring while in the Mediterranean countries is more in autumn. This is related to the mechanism of development. For sure, as you said, uh, the, um, uh, the uh, tornadoes originating in land are typically associated with the contrast between air mass uh, uh, with different characteristics. So the arrival of cold air, for example, in the Po Valley in, the, in Northern Italy, while the cases uh, in, in the peninsular areas is typically associated with the, a sea surface temperature, no, as we said, at least for the Ionian cases, that is higher than, uh, than normal. So it's, it's still warm while you have the intrusion of cold air that arrive uh, in the Mediterranean. And so if you have also some Shear, you have the ingredients necessary for the development of the supercell. I think I hope that I know oh, this answer to the first question. About the second one, that this um, this is another no, very important point. Really, just this morning I was watching uh, at uh, some. I, I was preparing a, a presentation about just on this topic. And uh, really, there is no significant trend. I mean, the data on this point are, uh, have low confidence. So uh, the only thing about tornado activity in climate change is that same, seems to have some, um, um, some medium to high confidence is the fact that it's changing the frequency in the sense that, for example, in US, it has been uh, demonstrated with the observational data, that the number of tornado days, tornado days is decreasing. So the, uh, the number of days where you have at least a tornado is uh, reducing, but is increasing the number of days with the outbreak of tornadoes. So with several tornadoes. So which means that uh, you have uh, a higher number of uh, intense cases. So the condition may be are less frequent, but when you have the condition, then the event is very intense. About the climate change uh, simulation, we cannot say much in the sense that uh, um, tornado develop for a combination of events, which are instability and uh, shear. So if one of these parameters like CAPE, you know, like instability is increasing on the other side, you have a decrease in terms of wind shear expected in the, in, uh, in the future. So uh, you cannot say anything about that. Probably in the future, you, we will have uh, uh, some more detailed study, but also the results I expect will be strongly regional dependent. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question or comments? Also from online? Oh, yes, we have another question. Hello, Mar Marcello. Massimiliano from Genoa. Um, uh, I have a question about uh, the simulations that you showed, because um, you mentioned in one of your slides that there was uh, a coupling between uh, the rolls produced in the boundary layer uh, in, in, uh, in the sea and uh, the waves, the orographic waves from 
the mountains in Calabria. So I, uh, I wanted to ask you how you can uh, evaluate this from the model. You really, um, you really have the waves, you can see the waves in the boundary layer, so you can solve the motions in the boundary la layer or? Uh... Yes, um, there's a good, very good question in the sense that we really we noted that this um, sort of lines of very high humidity. And at the end, when we looked at, um, for example, the cross section, a vertical cross section, we saw that the, there is this uh, transport in some bands. And so mm, we suppose that this can contribute to the, the intensification of, uh, of the, um, when they interact with the orographic cells, they tend to, to intensify, to, to give uh, energy, if you want, to the cell. Really, I don't think that this, um, that this mechanism was really fundamental in the sense that, in my opinion, there what was really relevant was on the one side, the triggering of convection, and on the other side, the fact that it was arriving warm and moist air, not only in the rolls. The rolls were part of this general movement of warm and moist air. So, um, I mean, this, I think, was the most important thing. We noted these rolls, but uh, I have some uh, doubts that they were really very extremely important for the development of, uh, of the supercell. Thank you.